so so we're very used to especially in you know english departments and art history departments we're very used to saying the formulaic is bad right anything so it's so i'm thinking about two different things one is the the works of art that we come back to, works of culture that we come back to that are comforting, partly because they're predictable to us and 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 call up routine, like your example of friends, but then also the kinds of formulaic plots and characters that are themselves appealing, partly because they're familiar to us. So like the rom-com or the detective fiction, like those have staying power that it's kind of incredible if you think about how little we value that kind of formulaic uh, quality. Mm -hmm. So what I was trying to think about for, for myself as somebody who's always loved pop culture, even though I'm a professor of English and I teach, you know, literature that's associated with more kind of serious ventures. Um, I've always loved pop culture. And I was trying to think about the fact that like the happy ending, for example, which yeah. couldn't possibly hate more in literary studies, right? The happy ending is the sign of a bad ending. It's close yeah. everything down. All the excitements of the middle go away, right? It's it's boring. It's predictable. It's sappy, all those things. But in, yeah. in a lot of cases, and I'm a Victorian novel critic originally, the end is actually where a pretty precarious character, like an Oliver Twist or a Jane Eyre, ends up with a home and... Uh, a predictable life going forward. So it's not actually an end at all. It's the beginning of a series of stable moments going into the future, which means no longer the excitements of plot and chaos and crisis, but the happy ending is actually showing us the importance of those material kind of stabilities to leading a life that could be called happy. So as with friends, I think there's all kinds of problems with the content of particular happy endings, right? There's, you know, the fact that it's a heterosexual marriage or a successful career. And those are things that, uh, you know, we can always and should be finding problems with as kind of goals for life. But, but I think the happy ending also, one of the reasons it's comforting is that a lot of people who live precarious lives really do long for a certain kind of stability. And, and that's one of the ways that that formula speaks to us um if if we're anxious about tomorrow to know that there's a rom-com that's going to end happily is a way of kind of giving that sense of that desire for stability um mm. so it's it's yeah. interesting just to think about kind of like what what we might what we might appreciate in a story or what we might want from a story isn't just like what happens while we're watching or while we're reading but also the kind of like the afterlife we imagine you know like the, the characters, our time with the characters comes to an end, but we want to think of them as like continuing on in a more predictable, like, yeah, less like chaotic, stressful life. Yes, right. Um, so do you have a personal favorite happy ending that like, you know, someone with, you know, a critic's hat on might be like, oh, that's so conventional or that's so kind of like, bad for women or bad for society but you love it <laughs> um so one of my favorite 19th century novels which is not very often read anymore is called esther waters it's from the 1890s by an irish novelist named george moore and there's a character who is absolutely precarious like she's she's an unwed mother working class mother she's illiterate at a moment when there's actually universal education she can't read because her mother has kept her home from school she's just always on the brink of poverty uh, she hooks up with a gambler and then his fortunes go up and down and at the end she lives a life of predictability and it's uh it's a happy ending of a real kind that is she has food labor and company and she actually goes to church every week which is a kind of ritualized version of meaningfulness right it's like she's got predictability in her community also and in her sense of meaningfulness so that's an ending that's yeah. like comes right out of the problem of precarity yeah like that's an ending that the novel has prepared you to really want and understand yes. the importance of yes um, exactly yes 